Patrick Koo is a man with a green plan. He's an environmental engineer and also the general manager of RT Knits, a textile company that employs 1,600 workers. But it's not your run-of-the-mill textile factory. That's because Patrick and his team have designed it so it uses solar and natural wind to cut operating costs and reduce carbon emissions. We, we, have, we have made some calculation and uh, for example for carbon dioxide uh, we, shall, we shall reduce our carbon dioxide emission by 25%. We have already reduced our carbon dioxide by, uh, by 25%. Uh, I think that we, we can again further decrease the CO2 emission, right? And uh, for the costs, we have made some savings of, in terms of uh, energy we, are, we were using before. We have made an, uh, an, a reduction in, the, in this by, by 30%. What we see in the market right now, we have this soaring of energy prices. This will come again and we are preparing ourselves. We know definitely that, we will, that price, energy price will increase. And uh, I think if it's not now, we are, we are reaping the fruits right now, but we are going to reap it afterwards. So uh, we, are getting, we are preparing ourselves, but we are very confident that uh, we have invested uh, in the right direction. And by keeping costs down and staying flexible, RT Nets has been able to compete with the likes of China. Uh, China usually li like big orders, right? And uh, maybe, maybe uh, when they have, they have small orders, we are not uh, interested. So we are very hungry, right? So every small orders we can take, and we will going to take them. I think to compete with China and the Far East countries also, uh, we need to be very, very flexible with our customers, right? And also constantly reduce our lead time. Now. We have to uh, deliver maybe in two weeks' time, two weeks. Huh? After placing an order, we have to deliver in two weeks. This will help us a lot and also uh, improve on our service, improve on our quality of our products. For Mauritius, it's all about getting ahead of the curb. A stable political environment as well as a history of diverse cultures and traditions has allowed Mauritius to come up with innovative reforms and successfully implement these. Now everyone is simply holding their breath for the global economy to turn around. It is important to reassure people that this is a country that has been doing business not since today, but since the 1800s. So, you know, we, we, we understand business. But more importantly, I think we've been blessed by so many cultures in Mauritius. And I think it is like a natural hedging uh, in terms of, uh, I would say, there's no excess. Uh, because I think there's a tolerance coming in from the Asian culture. There is the speediness and the, the, the skilled uh, people coming from China. You've got the depth and the passion coming from Africa. You've got the market from the developed world coming from Europe. And I think when you put all this together, I mean, it's very difficult for people to become uh, less tolerant. In Mauritius, we don't tolerate people. We accept them wholeheartedly. And that is very important. So you feel very much at home. And we nurture talent. We nurture business. We nurture intelligence. And we like being where we are, you know. We are an African country, make no mistake. I might look Indian, but you know, I, I don't go to India. I've been to India only twice. But we are very much African. And it's very difficult to explain that to people at times. But we made that choice a long time ago.